welcome everybody and um yeah the, uh, another tech talk gee i've done about uh, what two or three tech talks in the last couple of weeks and before that i wasn't on air for a tech talk for at least a few months so it shows you eh? it swings and roundabouts and goes in phases anyway back and uh, loving it so i think this morning what we're going to do is we had a couple of uh, those of you that saw my last tech talk was on on shut off valves we had a couple of um questions left over that we didn't answer so we're going to touch on those however it's not enough to fill a whole tech talk so i've, I've populated it with other questions but as i've said to ruben that i would rather focus on the questions that come up live during the session rather than me going through the stuff that's on my on my presentation if there's no questions live that's fine because i have enough to to do um and i think they're interesting enough to 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 fill the 20 30 minutes but um I, I, ruben just a reminder that i think we should, you just interrupt me and just stop me and say hey richard here's a question from from the audience uh, which is live and uh, we'll we'll do that um i think that's probably the best uh, uh, way forward because it's 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 more pertinent shall we say to to the thing okay so let's start so these are as i said a couple of questions that came through from the shut off valve tech talk uh, there are a couple of other general questions as well from previous webinars but we'll carry on okay so a pressure control valve with an integrated shut off valve that's a that's a combi valve that we're all familiar with needs a separate shut off valve that's according to my webinar the other day when I said you need to have an, a, 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 a separate and dedicated shutoff valve, regardless or before PRV, regardless of whether the, the PRV is a combi valve or not. Okay, so this guy is making a statement. You need a separate shutoff valve, but he says a flash valve with an integrated shutoff valve doesn't need an, an, a separate and dedicated one before it. That's talking about a flash master, for example. Uh, so he says, surely both must have a separate shutoff valve before the component itself, but the standards only require the pressure valve to have a shutoff before it and not the flush valve. So why should the standards not be changed or surely the standards should be changed? Uh, look, I don't, I'm not going to comment on whether or not the standards should or shouldn't be changed, but this is what the standards do say, uh, just to reiterate. If you were in the uh, tech talk with the shuttle valves, you remember me going through the couple of points. And this is subsection E of, I think it's 613 or 6, 613 in 10252 stroke 1. And sub point E says on any branch pipe that serves an automatic flush valve, which is, of course, a flush master or a flushing valve, unless such a flush valve incorporates their own isolating valve. So there it says, plain as day, it says, you must put it upstream of a flush valve unless it incorporates its own. So it says it. However, when you look at what it says about the pressure control valve, it doesn't say anything like that. It simply says you shall have a shutoff valve upstream of a pressure reducing valve, um, which is less than 25 mil in, in, in diameter. So it doesn't. Um, how can you say, carry on to say that you can forego that valve if the PRV has its own shutoff valve. So it's, so therein lies the difference. So his, the statement that was made here is quite correct. Uh, the question that was asked, well, why don't we change the standards? Uh, that I don't know. Um, I would suspect that um, something like a pressure control valve is something that you would want to service uh, a little bit more often. Uh, and if not, if that's not the case, then you probably want to um because of its positioning and 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 location in in a typical setup you would want to have it more easily serviceable uh, and you want control of the water supply that supplies it when you're in the position of of removing that valve unlike a flush valve where you're kind of in a room standing up you you're okay but often a prv is in a ceiling and i suppose that that's the reason but no, whatever the reason is the fact is that the standards require it as such, and there's the proof of it. Um, can a PRV be installed upside down? Um, yes, it can. I don't know that a PRV has a particular orientation in terms of up and down, but um, certainly you can't put a PRV facing backwards in terms of flow, 
but you, uh, yeah, there's no there's no up and down for a, for a POV. Although um, I don't I don't know of any manufacturers that would say uh, no, you can't do it. But I don't think there are some valves that are designed to be more easily installed properly, proper way up rather than upside down. I'm thinking of a master flow. I'm thinking of a a closey valve uh, because your outlet faces down. Um, etc. So there are some valves that it would, just wouldn't make sense, but I don't think there are particular um, reasons for not being allowed to install a PRV upside down. With a dual system 400 slash 600 kPa, what expansion valve is recommended? That's a quite an important question because it opens up, uh, well, basically what is being asked is what is the relationship of pressures between the pressure control valve of a cylinder, the cylinder itself, and other stuff. And when I say other stuff, I mean the TP valve. So let's talk about that. Um, in the past, SANS 10254 was a little bit ambiguous. The wording was ambiguous. However, the meaning hasn't changed. The meaning was always the same. What the requirements are is that a geezer the rated pressure of the geezer is the rated pressure of the geezer. The geezer itself is supplied with a TP valve. It comes with its own TP valve. Any geezer you buy will come with a TP valve, either fitted or supplied with it. So the geezer and the TP valve have to comply in terms of a pressure rating. They will uh, match each other in pressure rating. They, will, they are integral. They are supplied together. It's one and the same thing almost. So you must look at the geezer and the TP valve as a as almost like a unit. So if the geezer is rated at 400 kPa, the TP valve will have to be rated at 400 kPa. But 600 kPa, it has to be 600 kPa TP valve, etc. However, if you want to decrease the incoming pressure to that geezer, for example, if you want to put a 100 kPa uh, PRV on a 600 kPa geezer, that's no problem. You can have a geezer which is rated higher than the pressure control valve. So the incoming pressure can be reduced and the, the geezer will thank you for it. But do not think that you can match or that you should match the pressure control valve to the pressure of the TP valve in and, and, and forgetting about what the rating of the geezer is. In other words, don't go and because you've got 100 kPa PRV, don't go put 100 kPa TP in there. The TP must match the geezer. Then the reason for this is because six months or two years or three years down the line, somebody can come up and say, gee, man, you know what? I haven't got enough uh, flow rate. And uh, or plumber will be called, gee, you know, I haven't got enough flow rate. Or maybe it's the handyman Bob down the street. And handyman Bob, Bob comes and has a look and says, oh, man, it's a 600 kPa geezer and I'll put in a 600 kPa valve for you and then you'll have proper flow rate. But he doesn't look at the TP valve. In the meantime, the TP valve matches the PRV, which is 100. Now it puts a 600 PRV in and you, you get what I'm saying. Okay, so the, the short answer is um, the TP has to match the uh, the the geezer. Um, okay, so if a manufacturer says to you that you shall install a valve in a certain orientation, then of course that is the way to install it. Does the strainer section of a quick cut PRV not have to be at the bottom? Uh, as the Y strainer needs to have the catchment section below. I don't think so because the Y strainer, you 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 see, the Y strainer will um, has to be downward facing because of the fact that you, when you remove it, you you don't want to allow um, the debris to fall back into the pipe. I suppose you could argue that that's the same argument for a for a PRV as well. So when you remove the cartridge with a strainer in, and if it's on the top. You're allowing that debris to fall back in. I, I'm assuming that you're going to flush it after it uh, after you've removed the cartridge, so that you're going to flush that stuff out. Um, and uh, let's think about it, because if it's upside down, you're going to flush it <laughs> towards the the roof, and that's not so lucky. So yeah, it, it doesn't really it doesn't really uh, lend itself to easy maintenance. However, I don't think so. So my on my my answer to the particular question would be that um, in for it to be able to operate correctly, I don't think it makes a difference. However, 
I don't think it's so liquor when you're trying to flush the thing and, and keep the thing clean. Uh, can you put a shut off valve and strainer on the out, uh, council side before the water meter and not upstream of the water meter? Uh, so the council side of the water meter is upstream. Uh, I think you meant, George, I, meant, I think you meant downstream. So in, in other words, you're asking whether you can put a shut off valve and strainer upstream on the council side of the water meter and not downstream. So I think your local council will not be too happy with you if you go and mess around with their connection. Remember that everything before the meter belongs to the council. They will have their own shut off there um, and then they'll have the meter. If we go and mess around with any kind of connection before the meter, we will, uh, we, well, simply put, we are not allowed to. So, um, because we can, you know, put hidden tea pieces in there and supplies and all kinds of things. So, we're not allowed to touch anything before the meter. So, I would say no. It's my opinion installing a PRV upside down is similar to uh, as installing a strainer upside down when you need to service the PRV. Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you're 100%, uh, man. That is uh, exactly right. But I think we've, we've, we've covered that. Um, Rico, if the Giza is 400 kPa and it has a 600 kPa PRV, you need to replace is what KPA do you replace it? So that doesn't, you shouldn't ever have a geezer with 400, with a 400 rated geezer with a 600 PRV. That should never be the case. You can never ever have a PRV that is rated higher than the geezer. So I think that answers that you can, you, so if, if you are called out to a situation like that, um, that's pretty much, well, it's non-compliant, so you need to rectify it in any event. So you, you, the maximum amount, of, the maximum pressure-rated PRV you can put in there is 400. Okay, let's just go to the next uh, question on the screen here. Does the small shut-off valve on a quick-hot multi-PRV constitute a shut, uh, the shut-off? Uh, the answer is no, because it needs to be a dedicated, separate shut-off valve. Um, if you look at what the wording, well, there it is. If you look at subsection or sub clause H there, it says on the upstream side of any pressure reducing valve of a nominal inlet. Okay, so what constitutes a valve, a a um, uh, a component? Let's call it a component. If I can, if it's a single casting, if it's a single piece, that is my component. It's the same as a geezer. I can't cut a geezer in half. And say, well, this is the, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking of an analogy off, off the top of my head, but I mean, I can't cut a geezer and take the casing off and say, oh, okay, this is the low pressure side of the geezer and this is the high pressure side of the geezer. It is a single component. So when we talk about the geezer, we talk about it as a unit. The same thing as a PRV. So if we look at the body of a PRV, where it's a combi valve or a, or a, or a uni valve, it's it's a component, and the standards say to me, I need to install an isolating valve upstream of the component, which means that it needs to be a separate and dedicated isolating valve before the actual valve itself. So as handy and as convenient as the integrated pure of, well, integrated shutoff is on a on a multi valve, it does not constitute and does not replace the, the required shutoff valve upstream of it. Uh, Kenneth asked, are we allowed to replace the water meter? I would say I'm not the expert, but I would say absolutely no. Um, <laughs> because, it, look, okay, so if it belongs to council, so the water meter is there for a purpose. Um, and it is to water, uh, to meter water supply. So. In the case of the council, any tampering with the water meter will land you in hot water. So if you go and replace it, there's no ways that that's going to be okay. They have to know what you're putting in there. They don't know whether it's it's been tampered with, whether it's been doctored, so as to to um, read less. Um, so they will they will not enjoy that at all. So the answer is no. You can't replace the water meter unless. It is a private water meter in, for example, a granny flat situation, and the, the owner of the water meter has given you express permission to do so, i.e. the homeowner. 
So it's a sub meter, fine, then go for it. I mean, if the thing's buggered, then go and change it. But if it belongs to the council, no ways. Don't uh, don't touch it. Don't touch the shut off valve before it. And by the way, that is also the reason why you need your own separate shut off valve uh, downstream of the water meter, because that is the owners of or the owner of the earth, the owner of the property's shut off valve that he's supposed to use. You are not supposed to go and shut water off and on with using the council shut off, which is upstream of the water meter. So that is theirs. You're not supposed to touch it. Everything downstream of the water meter, you can you can uh, you can touch. In the case of a water meter, if you're going to install a water meter on private property and it belongs to you or the homeowner, then you should have a shut off on both sides. Any water meter must have a shut off on both sides. So you'll have one upstream. Uh, most water meters will have a built-in strainer, but if you want to put an additional strainer in there, that's fine. Uh, so you will have one upstream, and then you will have one downstream. And the reason for that is because you want to be able to uh, isolate that water meter completely. It will have union-type uh, couplings which on the tasses, which you can remove and change that water meter without having to drain the installation. So you need one upstream and downstream. However, in a in a in a in a council owned water meter situation you cannot go and change or put anything upstream of that you can't go and mess around with that at all okay back to the screen now if you have a pressure valve on the main line and your geysers are far away will you need to install another pressure valve at the geyser uh, well it depends on what kind of pressures you're talking about so no essentially no not not on the face of it you don't want, ideally, you don't want a pressure valve too far away from the geyser because it is, um, you, you're experiencing flow rate loss and, and friction loss through, the, through the, the length of the pipe, which is between, well, yeah, between the, the PRV and the geyser. So if you are reducing the head at the PRV, which you're doing, you are, you are further reducing the dynamic head uh, the further away it is because of the friction loss. So most high pressure valve manufacturers like 400 and 600 kPa valve manufacturers will say to you that um, you shouldn't install the valve further than about 10 meters away from the from the geyser ideally so what if uh, you're talking about a complex which we've all come across like a block of flats or a, or a, 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 a a security complex and it has a 110 mil incoming main supply uh, that goes through a meter and then it goes through a pressure reducing valve 110 mil diameter pressure reducing valve set to let's say 600 kPa so there is a PRV yes it's a big old thing but that's a PRV and in a case like that you would have absolutely that is just a reduced water pressure or reduced pressure supply to the entire complex you would treat the incoming water to each and every unit as main incoming water supply. You would require a pressure control valve in front of every single geyser. So in a case like that, where you have a bulk pressure reducing system, then yes, you would absolutely have a second PRV in the line. But I think this question uh, meant sort of in a domestic situation where you've got a normal 22 mil at the meter, and a normal 22 mil PRV at the at the geyser, but that would become um, you would always need a PRV at at the geyser in any event, unless um, yeah, unless you can absolutely guarantee that the that the the system will never ever exceed that pressure. Because what happens if six months down the line somebody comes and says, oh gee, there's not enough flow rate at this tap. Uh, oh, what's this here? That's a PRV after the meter. I'm going to take that out, and then what? Now you're stuck with a, a, a geyser without any pressure-reducing valve. So you should have a PRV at the geyser, and any um, diagram or, or instruction 10254 would tell you that you need a PRV at a geyser. The only time you can forego a pressure control valve at a geyser is if you have a dedicated tank supply in a in a building that has been constructed and designed for for supplying the hot water cylinders from a tank and if that tank is not too high to exceed the head of the of the or the rating of the geyser uh, i'm going to look at the 
other questions here? Uh, do you need a non-return valve after the water meters? Yes, you do. Uh, you need to, oh, I'm second guessing myself now. I'm second guessing myself. For the, uh, okay, I'm going to put a proviso in this answer. I, I'm, I'm about 80% sure, and I don't have the thing in front of me. But if you look at the requirements for water meters, um, it will say to you, you shall have a shutoff valve, you shall have A, B, and C. And I think it does include a non-return valve. <clears throat> Either the non-return valve must be built into the water meter or you need to actually install one. Uh, please don't quote me on that. As I say, I'm about 80% sure I don't have that answer at my fingertips. Um, I've experienced, Simon says, I've experienced places whereby there are, uh, there are no downstream valves installed. Uh, what should I do? Uh, what should I do to shut waters? I'm not allowed to use the upstream valve. Simon, your best, uh, your, well, you, in a case like that, you have to use the upstream valve uh, in an emergency or whatever. You do what you can, but um, th there's an opportunity for you to inform the client, hey, you haven't got a downstream valve, you need one installed, and, and here's a quote to do it. So it's, it's like anything else. You've come across a non-compliant installation. You've done the best you can to, to, to uh, you know, go uh, jump the hurdle, <clears throat> but you need to then notify the client and say, look, we need to install a valve. Lawrence is asking, doesn't distance away influence the balance system? Uh, Lawrence, the, the, I think you mean the PRV, the PRV between, well, the distance between the PRV and the geezer. You're asking whether it influences the balance system. Yes, it does. Because you, whatever the case is, if you increase the distance between a PRV and wherever the terminal fitting is, the terminal point is, you still have to take into account the friction loss within the pipe. So uh, it, it, it affects it in the sense that it will, it will well, it will lessen the flow rate, the dynamic flow rate um, of, the, of the installation if it's very, very far away. If you are a pump system to a dwelling from a storage tank and the pump is rated lower than the pressure rating for a geezer, do you still need to install a PRV? Yes, Mark, you do. Um, as I say, the standards, only allow for us to forego or leave out the PRV in the in the instance where you've got a static tank supply in a multi-story building. A static tank supply, if I'm on the fifth floor of a building and it's a 15 story building and I've got a tank up there and the the, the system has been or the building has been designed to um, for a for dedicated tank supply to all units. It means that the pipes are, are there are no um, <clears throat> full pressure municipal main pipes in the vicinity of the unit that I can go and accidentally cut into tomorrow. So I have the only water supply that I have available to me at that unit is from the tank. That's what they mean when they talk about a building that has been designed to use with tanks. You cannot confuse a, a main supply and a tank supply. So if that's the case, and I'm on the fifth floor, and the tank is on the fifth, 15th floor, there's 10 floors uh, uh, between us, I can work out the, the head, I can calculate what the static pressure is going to be, and nothing can make that change. Nothing can exceed that. I, the, I, I'm not going to go and build another 15 floors on top of the building and put another tank on there you know, overnight. So it's impossible for me to change the, 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 the current state of affairs. If I've got a, a 100 kPa or 150 kPa head, that's it. I can be rest assured that if, I'm, that if it's like that today, it's going to be like that tomorrow. However, with a tank and a pump, I cannot guarantee that because tomorrow I can go and change that pump or somebody can go change that pump. And as, as we say, you know, things happen. People get irritated and say, oh, I haven't got enough flow. So tomorrow I go, oh, what is this, a 0 0.35? No, I want a 0 0.75 uh, with an with a, with a eight, you know, eight bar head. Uh, and so I'll just go put that in there. That'll sort my flow rate out. Oopsie, my PRV is not present. So no, Mark, for that reason, you can't, you can't forego the PRV. The shutoff valve, leave a ball valve at the bottom 
of the solar panel, the one that you need to put there for maintenance and flushing purposes. The question was, uh, is it not dangerous for children? I think we were talking about, you know, putting valves and uh, I, I think I, re I remember what I was talking about, um, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, having the wrong valves closed and, 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 a, and a solar system uh, sitting in the sun and boiling away. Um, look, anything is dangerous. Uh, put in the wrong position, but I don't know, you know, it, it, a thing like a solar system is not something that uh, is going to be that accessible to children, but of course, yes, I mean, if you if you ask that question directly, I suppose it is dangerous to children, but so is a stove and so is a kettle. So, yeah, but it needs to be there for, for maintenance purposes. If you're installing a fire hose reel, do you need to install a lever valve? Uh, the fire hose reel, uh, I'm talking under correction. I don't know whether a fire hose reel requires a dedicated shutoff before its own tap. I'll have to get back to you. I know that, of course, a fire hose reel has got its own stop tap at the fire hose reel, and 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 that's fine, and pressure gauge and vacuum breaker. But I I'm not sure whether you actually have to isolate it uh, upstream. I'm sure you do need to be able to. The the normal sort of um, thing applies, whereby you have got to be able to isolate portions of any installation in order to maintain uh, and replace, etc. So in that sense, I'm sure you would require it on sections, but I don't think you would require it on each and every fire hose reel. Comment on the lever valve at the bottom of the solar panel. This can have a Konex plug put in front of it for safety. Uh, yeah, it can actually. Uh, there's no reason for that, uh, for that not to not to occur. Yeah, if it can put it in front, that's a good suggestion, actually, Mark. Lots of times in a tank and pump system, when the power is out or the pump gets faulty, uh, the dwelling is then exposed to the main municipal supply, 100%. So that's another reason why you wouldn't forego a PRV when you have a tank, uh, a pumped supply from a tank. If you buy shutoff valves, just remember that the that that as as with anything, um, you need to ensure that the shutoff valve or the component that you're buying complies to the relevant standards. And one of the requirements for brass uh, fittings of any description is that they have a DZR or that they are made from DZR brass, desinctification resistant brass. So you would look on the actual unit itself and um, you would look for a mark that says DR or DZR. And you'd know then that it ma it's made out of de desinfication resistant brass. Uh, is it possible to install three vacuum breakers on a single geezer? There's no need for it. I, uh, you know, each, each installation has got its own challenges. So I, I, th I, I suspect that there is more detail and context to that question. Uh, so perhaps you should um, contact me uh, privately or contact somebody privately and we can discuss that. Back to the screen now. I was recently on a site where four units or dwellings share one PRV. Should each unit or dwelling have its own PRV? Yes, absolutely. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, you've got an installation what constitutes an installation? If I if it's a unit in separate occupation, that is an installation. And if and if you look at the requirements for shutoff valves uh, and geyser installations in the standards, they 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 don't talk about sharing. You can't have one PRV um, sharing for 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 multiple units. So yes, you absolutely do need separate PRVs at each geyser because a geyser is a separate installation. And if you look at the requirements for a geyser installation, you require a pre PRV at the geyser. Uh, must the garden tap be independent of the house water feed? Uh, the only thing that the standards say about uh, what they call, uh, what they would call a garden tap is a high draw off fitting, a fitting that requires a high water draw off. It is, it is a garden tap and uh, some flush valves. So you can't have a pressure control valve upstream of high draw off water fittings. In other words, you can't have a balanced pressure garden tap. Now, if you do have, if it happens to be one, I don't think it's a major train smash, 
but the standards do say to you that all high water draw off uh, fittings shall be teed into or should be uh, supplied before the installation of a PRV. Um, if the geyser is 15 meters above a 400 kPa PRV, can you install a 600 PRV or should you rather move the PRV closer to the geyser? I think that's been asked and answered. In no way, shape or form can you ever install a 600 kPa uh, PRV on a 400 kPa geyser. So that's quite simple. Um, I remember this having been asked before. Will the Kalefi valves warranty be upheld when a separate uh, when we separate the pressure control and the expansion valve. And I remember asking Mr. Gordon about this, Patrick Gordon, uh, and he said, yes, it will be upheld. Um, Patrick, if you're there and I'm talking nonsense, correct me, but I, I do remember that uh, you, you indicated that it will be upheld because you're not tampering with the valve per se, you, you're simply separating the, the components. You asked for, for, for contact numbers. I'll give you mine. It is 0832706195. We were advised that we will still need a PCV on a gravity fed system. If a manufacturer avoids the warranty due to this, will I opt to assist us in this regard? Yes, we absolutely will because the standards are clear. We do a lot of installation in the CBD, so this is a common problem for us. Peter, um, the standards are clear. Uh, there are a couple of provisions that, that need to be sort of fulfilled. Um, so the building, as I stated, has to have been designed for use with a tank system. You cannot have a situation where it has been a re, you know, sort of a, a, an afterthought putting a tank there because what then can happen is that somebody can mistake a main supply for a tank supply and swap the two. So if it's a designed from the ground up sort of a building with a tank supply, that's the one proviso. The other one is, of course, is that the the the, the head between the, the installation and the tank does not exceed the rating of the geyser. That's another proviso. Um, and that the expansion from the geyser needs to go up and it will then discharge into the tank itself. Or, you know, you, you'll have an essentially, let's call it an open vented system, although that, that can be massaged. But, um, but to answer your question, Peter, yes, contact us and we will most certainly look at it and, 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 and have a chat. You know, we can, we can look at it, no problem. Can one not just have a relief at the geyser if one PRV for the complex? No, no, you can't. No, you have to have a pressure control valve at the at the geyser, Roy. Uh, hi, is it correct to install master control valve for four units? No, it's not. I think that's been asked and answered. You need each unit is an is an installation, and it is. Um, look, you can, as I say, you can have a bulk PRV for as many units as you like, but. What I'm saying is that does it does not take the place of the separate PRV for each geezer. So you can have a, a master box for four units, that's fine, but it does not take the place of the PRV at the geezer. Thank you very much for attending. Good attendance again this morning.